Good morning, New Hope. Good morning, New Hope. Praise the Lord. Amen. Oh, yes, it says, let everything that hath breath praise God this morning. Amen. You know, he woke us up. He breathed life into to us today. We have so much to say. Thank you, Lord. Come on now. We're in hell and in next hell because of the glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord rise amongst us today. Amen. So let us all stand today. Amen. Praise team. Praise team. Let us stand in awe, God. I woke up this morning. Come on, young folks. Let's stand. Let's pray. Stand in awe, God. Today.
Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for giving us another chance to praise your name, to give you glory. Oh, Father God, thank you. Thank you for all the things that you have done for our lives and all the things that you will do. Oh, Father God, touch the hearts and soul of Pastor Jeffrey and his wife and kids. Touch the congregation, Father God. Touch the mothers, Father God. Touch the choir, Father God. Touch the ministers and the ministries. Touch the deacons and the deaconettes, Father God. Touch the musicians, Father God. Touch the congregation, Father God. Touch the people who are praising your name right now, Father God. Touch the people who need you right now, Father God. Touch the ones who don't have the strength and the courage and the understanding to praise your name and ask you for help, Father God. Father God, go where they are sick and shut in at. Father God, go to the hospitals. Go to the homeless shelters, Father God. Go to the outside, right outside, Father God, where they're, they're cold and they're hungry, Father God. Father God, touch the hearts and souls of the people who are incarcerated, Father God. Touch the hearts and souls of the people who are hurt, the people who are abused, Father God. The ones who need you right now, Father God. The ones who are crying out to you right now, Father God. The ones who need you right now, Father God. Oh, Father God. Touch the heart and the soul and the spirit that can hear my voice. Oh, Father God, lift us up. Give us strength, Father God. Oh, Father God, remove anything that is not of you right now in the name of Jesus, Father God. Replace everything that is not of you right now, Father God, with compassion with integrity, Father God, with dedication, Father God, with obedience, Father God, with compassion, Father God, with empathy, Father God, with love, unconditional love, the love that Jesus has, Father God. Replace it, Father God, with knowledge, with wisdom, Father God, with understanding, with hope, all hope in you, Father God. All hope in Jesus right now, Father God. Shower down on us, Father God. Shower down on us, Father God, as we give you praise. Praise from our hearts. Praise from our soul. Praise from our minds. Praise from our spirit. Oh, Father God, get into our spirit. Get into our mind. Get into our soul, Father God. Lift us up, Father God. Let somebody see our, 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 our light, Father God, that Jesus put inside of us. Oh, Father God, help us. Help us through the pain. Help us through the misery. Help us through the suppression and oppression and the, the discomfort and the unfairness and the unequality, Father God. Help us to, to, to call out to you and say, Jesus, we need you. Oh, Father God, I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If I say thank you a thousand times, Father God, 
it's not enough. So I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father God. Because you are a mighty God. You are a God of all gods. You are the past God. You are the present God. You are the future God. You are a God of all gods. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Father God, with a heartache in the pain, Father God, we accept it because we know you are faithful. You are just. You are mighty. And when we're inside of your bosom, you, you are unwavering. Oh, Father God, I pray that you will cover this world in the blood of Jesus from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Response of reading in your bulletin, 2 Thessalonians 2, 13 through 17 in the New Living Translation. And when you get there, we will read. But we ought to always to thank God for you, brothers and sisters loved by the Lord, because God chose you as first fruits to be saved through the sanctification through sanctifying works of the Spirit and through belief in the truth. So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the teaching we pass on to you, whether, be, whether by word of mouth or by letter. Amen. You may be seated.
men of the river for an answer. Jesus gave the key. Said, if I, I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw, I'll draw all men. All men. Lift him up, the Savior. Hey, 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 hey. Tell his feet, tell his feet from eternity. From eternity, speaks from eternity. Yeah. God said it. God said it. If I walk right, if I walk God right, said it. God said it. If I talk right, if I talk right, God said it. God said it. If I live right, if I live right, God said it. God said it. If I pray right, if I pray right, I'll draw. Yeah. Men of every bird for an answer, Jesus gave the key. He said, I've been lifted up from the earth. I'll draw, I'll draw all men, 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 joyful noise unto the Lord today. Amen. He says if we live right, if we talk right, if we walk right. Amen. 
You got to be in the spirit to do all of those things. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us do it right. Amen. Let the spirit just abide in us. Amen. Today. Amen. Talk right. Live right. Love right. Huh? Hey, amen. Lift him up. That's what it's all about. Lifting him up. Amen. Lifting up the name of the Lord today. The announcements, your announcements are in the program. Let me find them. Amen. On the 13th, which is just, we had a home buyer's workshop here, and I think it was very beneficial for those that attended. So that was something that was gathered here just yesterday. On the 14th, Today has been canceled, the pastor going out to Reverend Stoops in Everett. It has been canceled, so the choir will not be invited. <laughs> they will not be following the pastor there because he will not be there. Amen? Okay, so we'll govern ourselves accordingly to that. On the 14th, today, you know what today represents? Palm Sunday. Amen? Amen? Come on, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. He talks about his joyful reentry into Jerusalem, amen? Coming on a colt. Some say an ass, but, but praise God. You know what? People pave the way for him, amen? Make way the path for the Lord, amen? Set it straight, amen, on this Palm Sunday. On the 15th, which is tomorrow, at 7 o'clock p.m. right here will be Valerie Jarrett. And she's the senior advisor to the President Barack Obama. And she'll have discussions and a book signing right here at New Hope tomorrow night, 7 o'clock p.m. Yeah, the event is free. It's not costing you anything. Amen. But we certainly love to have your presence. Amen. Come out and support that day. On the 19th, that's coming up this Friday, Good Friday, Good Friday. I don't think we're having service here on that day, but Good Friday is the 15th. So take the time to reflect Good Friday, what that day means, amen? I met gospel preachers and learners and teachers and members of the, of the followers of Christ. You know, we, we teach the death the burial, and the resurrection. Amen? That's what it's all about. Amen? So be mindful what Friday represents. Amen? The death. And, you know, just think about it. Crucified. You know, you've heard the story. But visualize it on this Friday. What, they, what he did for us on that day. Amen? Amen. And then uh, you know what's coming next Sunday on the 21st. He rose. Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Amen. He rose on that day. Now, I have someone, Sister Deacon Rafina is going to tell us about the widow and widower's life. Go ahead. I won't do that again. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> Good morning, New Hope. All praises to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who's head of my life. And I know that you're all giving him praise this morning. Amen. I don't know. You know I don't need no money. It says it's on. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm here to uh, announce the Widows and Widows Luncheon on Saturday, the 20th, from 1 to 5. And I'm looking forward to seeing everyone come out and have a good time. We're going to have food, prizes. We're also going to have an awesome speaker, uh, Deacon Mel Mel Michael Fortson, before he takes off and relocates in Houston. So our honorees this year will be uh, Deborah Hare, uh, Miss Lula Mae Camp, who is uh, Sister Mary Houston's mother, Tommy Charles Anderson, who is Audrea Anderson's cousin, Demetrius Lamar Hotskins, which is a Sister Bynum's grandson, 
uh, Marion Moore. She was a member of the church a while back before she moved to uh, Sparks, Nevada. She's the daughter-in-law of Sister Lietha Moore, who passed recently. Uh, Mother Maxine Frazier, one of our outstanding mothers on the motherboard. Also, Mother Elizabeth King Jones, who also we'll be honoring. And Sister Shirley Mace Parker, which is Cheryl Miskelly's mother. So let us all come out and have a good time and just, just you know, greet the families as they come. And uh, we're just going to praise God that day. Amen. Right now we have a presentation from Sister Cheryl Peterson. Good morning, church. Good morning. We are honoring our, um, our last mother on the motherboard um, who was not able to be here on our church anniversary. She's been pressing her way for the past several Sundays and she was able to make it here today, Mother Ella Harrison. So, yes, so we wanted to make sure that she knows that we, New Hope, love her and that she also, we have um, her gift that will be presented to her today. We have other mothers that are being currently appointed to the motherboard and they will be presented to the church at a later time. But this um, concludes our six mothers that are currently on the motherboard and it is increasing. So we honor Mother Ella on today. Thank you. Uh, Sister Mary, I think you had a presentation also. Mary and the Elks. morning, New Hope. May God be praised for our presence here today. Say so we are members of the Evergreen Temple, number 157, Daughters of Elks. Our um, daughter ruler could not be here today, but we have a vice daughter ruler <laughs> here, Leslie Torrey. Um, we would like to present to New Hope our little token of love. Each year, we choose a church to attend to worship this is one of the rules of our organization that we have a Thanksgiving service and we choose a church in our city to come and worship with them on this particular Sunday, every second Sunday in April. So we're happy to be here and for those who are few in numbers today for some reason, I don't know if they got the Sundays mixed up or what, but anyway, we just thank God for being here and I will present to you the um, exalted ruler of Cascade uh, Lodge, number 1416, Brother Julius Williams. Good morning, saints. God is good. I want to hear all the time. There you go. There you go. Because, hey, tears came to my eyes this morning. During the prayer session, I want to jump up and holler. I want to shout. Because I know God is good. He brought me back from death three times. So I know what it's all about. God is good. But anyway, it's a pleasure and it's an honor to be here to fellowship with you saints this morning. It's good to be here to support our daughter. We do it each and every year during their church month. So we, the brothers of Cascade Lodge, number 1416, would like to give a token of gratitude to your church. Thank you, Saints. It's also uh, for the kids and the children, adult, young adults, 
Anyway, the church on this Saturday at 1030, they're having an Easter egg hunt. Amen. Right over in the park. Okay. So everyone that wants to attend and everything, bring your children out. And on Saturday, right across the street at the park, there's an Easter egg hunt. And the events and special treats will be as followed. Amen. Oh, it will go until 12 o'clock. Okay, 10.30 to 12. Or until everybody no, no longer can find an egg. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. On the 27th at 9.30 a.m. will be the Diagnet Board meeting. On the 28th, this is the fourth Sunday of every month, it's Family and Friends Sunday. Amen. So tell a friend about it. Bring a family member. I don't know what family we will be honoring this coming month. I'm sorry. The Davis family. Amen. This Sunday we'll honor that family. But bring out a friend. Amen. See how we do it here at New Hope. You know, we're all family. Amen. But a special, special event will take place to honor the Davis family on that day. On the 4th of May is Mother and Daughters Women's Conference right here. On the 19th, the Youth Workshop after church. It's in May and on the 1st of June, the William Brothers Concert. Amen? Amen? You better get your tickets because the last time they had them all in the Raptors and nobody else was, you know, this place was packed. So please. The concert will be that on the 1st of the Williams Brothers. And then on the 9th of June, Pastor and Wife's anniversary. Amen. We'll be honoring them on that beautiful day. So those are a lot of events. Go ahead and govern yourselves accordingly. A lot of things going on at the church. You know, God's people are doing things. Amen. Amen. Come on. We need to stay active. Amen. We always talk about, well, Boredom, but you know, I, my mother, you know, I was busy all week and I, I stay busy, and you know, because I know the idle hands, this truly is the devil's workshop. Amen. So let us stay busy in the Lord's work. Amen. Amen. Don't make way for the devil. Amen. Praise God. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Minister Reverend Nate. He said Easter Sunday. Amen. Easter Sunday. This Easter Sunday, we won't have a sunrise service. Amen. There will just be a service at 10 o'clock a.m. Amen. So that's this Easter Sunday. So praise God. Some things are done differently this year. Amen. God's still moving. Huh? Huh? We're still there to lift him up. Amen. And we're going to have service at 10 a.m., amen? So let's all come on Resurrection Day, 10 a.m. Somebody comes at 6 o'clock, you you're just going to be there at the door, amen? So hopefully, you know, we'll keep praying because at 10 o'clock, stay till 10, you know? But we'll be here at 10 o'clock on Easter Sunday, amen? Those are your announcements and events. Is there any birthdays in the house today? Any birthdays? I think somebody's just a little shy, probably, but praise the Lord. There's no birthdays in the house. Is, is there any visitors in the house today? Any visitors in the house? Just stand up so we can see where you're at. Amen. Come on now, somebody. Huh? Praise the Lord. Amen. Can you just remain standing? I'm not going to ask you much questions. We just want to go ahead and greet you and say thank you. Let the glory of the Lord continue to shine upon you. Amen. We're thankful in the absence of our pastor, Robert Jeffrey, and the First Lady Karen, and all the members of, of New Hope Missionary Baptist Church. We're surely thankful. It's a privilege and an honor for us to be in your presence. And we hope today, the day that the Lord has made, if you're looking for a church home, you know, you're looking somewhere to join and be part of a family, you know, please come. 
please come and come as you are to come and worship God. Amen. Amen. Let the glory of the Lord be amongst you. We ask him for his blessings and his guidance to be with you every step of your walk. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. So we see where our visitors are today. We're going to have a congregational fellowship time, so it's time to greet one another today. So let us go ahead and greet one another with a holy hug. Amen. Praise the Lord.
take care of his children, hallelujah. Easter, the Easter egg hunt that uh, was announced is going to be 9 to 12 instead of the time that was given, I believe at 10.30. It's going to be 9. Oh, okay. Let's get it, let's get it. Which one is it? Whoever's in charge. Well, whoever is in charge, please. 
Whoever is in charge, please stand. Lord, help us, even this little thing is confusing. All right, we're moving on. You want to come in now, you come in now. <laughs> Whatever time you want to come, you come. They'll be there till 12, I guess. Wherever. Y'all, this don't make no sense. Don't make no sense. So listen up. Be here at nine or ten, and you're gonna have the Easter egg home. Amen. Well, it's time for our tithes and offerings. I want to say to our visitors how much we are so grateful that you're here. I know that Reverend Hatcher has has recognized you, and I'm so grateful for the blessing that you are. Uh, to the body here at New Hope. Thank, we thank God for the lodge and the sisters and brothers of the lodge that they've come, taken their time out to come as a group of people to come and bless us today. Let's clap our hands for their blessing. Yes, yes. I ever the Lord leads. They're kind enough to do that and, and kindness means everything. And thank God for all of the visitors and we do pray for you, our visitors, even before we're here to each each Sunday. We are, we don't know who's going to be here, but we're praying for you that you come. It's all about Jesus, y'all. It ain't about nothing else. It's, it's not about anything else but Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're grateful that you're here and that you're going to be blessed by the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And he is in the blessing business. Hallelujah. He knows how to bless us all. So we're grateful for the blessing, the kindness for each one of you today and all of the New Hope family. Glory to God, we're so grateful. Listen, I won't, I won't be going out of town. <laughs> I thank God for his blessings for my children and they are blessing me to be able to come and go to visit my children. So I'm going to Pennsylvania this time and I won't be here for Easter, but no, know that I, I will always pray. I'm always praying for you, New Hope. I'm always praying for you and know that I am believing God to bless you in a very special way um, as he does each day, but it, uh, as we recognize and acknowledge Easter. Hallelujah. So I will be back uh, after Mother's Day. So I thank you for your prayers for me and your thoughts of me as you pray and believe God for my daughter, Adisa, is going as well, and uh, my other. But she's not, she'll be back, yes, she's not staying as long as I am, because I'm the mom. I get to stay a little bit longer than, than my children, so I praise God for the blessing. All of these blessings come from the Lord, amen? So let's get our tithes and offerings while you're seated, if you need an envelope for your tithes and offerings, and to our visitors, there are envelopes if you, if you uh, are giving today, if you will place it in your envelope, your tithes and offerings in the envelope. The ushers will give you, they'll raise your hand, they'll raise your hand, and they'll give you an envelope for tithes and offerings. all stand. Our ushers will help you as you come around. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're thankful today. We're thankful today for all of your goodness. We're thankful today for how you provided for us. You always provide. Lord, I thank you now for the blessing and generously giving as we give to you, oh God, tithes and offerings. Thank you for the blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. And our ushers will help you as you come around today.
Father God, thank you for the ones that was a little here, for the ones that was not. And we ask you to just continue to bless this house in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. again we come looking to you who are our help father God looking to the hills from whence cometh our help father God we know that everything that we are everything that we go through father God we know that there is nothing that you can't do father God your people are hurting right now God there are some who are the devil who is just under attack from the enemy right now but God right now we ask that you just move in that situation oh God 
Father, your people are in hospitals right now. We ask that you just go there right now, God, to deliver them from that. Right now, we ask, God, that you just open up your hospital, Father God, spiritual hospital, just move in each and every situation. We ask you to go to the home of Reverend Thompson right now, God. Right now, God, where he sits, Father God, we ask you to just do a spiritual healing over his body right now in the name of Jesus, God. We ask right now, God, that you just move down your spirit, the power of your Holy Spirit to heal everything that's wrong right now. So, Father God, that there will be no need for nothing else to be done, oh God. Right now, there are others right now coming up on things that the enemy is trying to give them. But we rebuke it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, right now, we ask you to just touch their bodies right now, God. Touch whatever it is that the enemy has placed inside of them. Father God, right now, we ask you to just pull it out of them right now. God, you said in your word, whatsoever thing we ask, it will be done, God. Father God, we ask God that you just deliver people out of their situation, God. Somebody needs you right now, God. Somebody's having financial difficulty. Somebody feel like they just can't make it another day. But God, we know that you're able to just do what you said you're going to do. Father God, help them to believe in your word, oh God. Help them to stand on your word no matter what they're going through, oh God. Father, even though they backs us against the wall, we know that you're able to move the wall, oh God. Right now, you're saying in your words, speak to the mountain and it shall be moved, God. We are able to, to do our things ourselves, oh God. Help us to believe in the power that you have given to us. Right now, of those who stand before you, God, you know what they're here for. You know their situation, you know their circumstances. God, I believe that you're already taking care of it. God, I believe that it's already done, but they made the first step. They came to you, God. You said, speak those things, God. They try to speak what they want from you, God. They speaking healing right now from you, God. They speaking deliverance right now, God. We know that you're able. We know that it's already done, God. Give them the energy, the power, the strength, the peace to be able to stand until what you have already done be able to exist and come forth in this world, God, because it's already taken care of in yours. God, give them what they need to hold on. Give them what they need to believe in your word, to stand on your word regardless of what the enemy try to do, regardless of how the enemy try to come and turn them against you. Let them know that you haven't given up, that you haven't given them away, that you haven't thrown in the towel already done. 
and we just thank you. We give you praise for it. No matter what, we give you praise. No matter what the situation look, we give you praise. No matter what we you want to, we give you praise. No matter what the doctors tell you, we give you praise. We praise you, oh God. We thank you, oh God. No matter what you do, it's all good. We give you glory this day and every day, oh God. We want you all worthy. Worthy, oh God. Worthy of all the praise. And we count it done. In Jesus' name.
on the verge of breaking up although sometimes we have to walk alone now you ask yourself is our word from the Lord oh from the Lord you need a blessing, oh, and you need it right away. My God is concerned, and he's working it out for you, you, you. He's working it out. Oh, yes, he is. He's working it out for you. God cares. Yes, he does. I'm so glad to know he cares. Yes, he really cares. So glad to know he cares. And he's working. For you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew 21. Verse 1, and when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethphage unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you and Straightway you shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, you shall say the Lord hath need of them. And straightway he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell you, daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king comes unto thee, meek and sitting up on an ass, and a colt, the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was come unto Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. Amen. So we're speaking today from the coming of our king and his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Amen. Well, praise God. Thank you for your attendance, musicians, and for your help for all of us as you minister in music. The book of Matthew is the uh, first of the four Gospels, right? The book of Matthew records for us that Jesus is a direct descendant of David. And Jesus is also a descendant of Abraham, the father of Jews. Matthew writes also that Jesus fulfilled Old Testament prophecies about the Messiah's ancestry. He wrote in this manner to Jews because Jews needed to know that in order to say that someone belonged and was chosen by God, they had to have a certain lineage, a certain ancestry. And so because the genealogy would prove that Jesus is the descendant 
that the Jewish people were waiting for, Matthew wrote in this manner. He wrote in this manner because a person's family proved his or her standing as God's chosen people. And Jesus is the promised descendant of David who would reign forever. Isaiah 11, 1 through 5, 2 Samuel 7, 16, Acts 2, 22 through 36. Matthew writes in his book, especially with the purpose to present clear evidence that Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior. And from Matthew's writing, many came to believe in Jesus, but many did not. He shows us that God did not send Jesus to be an earthly king, but a heavenly king, hallelujah. And that his kingdom would be greater than David's because his kingdom would never end. Hallelujah. And this truth will even help us we be, as we be a, a, a willing vessel to receive and recognize Jesus for who he really is, God's only son, our king, and he is king forever. Hallelujah. Jesus is revealed as the king of kings, his birth was miraculous, and his life and teaching and the miracles and even his triumph over death, glory to God, showed his true identity. You can't be raised from the dead unless you're God. Hallelujah. He's God, and he's almighty God with all power in his hand. Matthew's gospel forms the connecting link between the Old and New Testament because of the emphasis that they played on the prophecy of, of Zechariah 9.9. 9. Jesus said in Matthew 5 and 17, he says, Jesus said, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. The true purpose of God's anointed deliverer, Jesus is who we're talking about, was to die for all people, to free them from sin's oppression. It ain't changed. It ain't changed, hallelujah. He's still, he's dead, he died, but he's alive, hallelujah, giving us even the more power and authority because he was raised from the dead and he ascended into heaven and is seated right now at the right hand of God the Father. God sent him to save us, y'all. We can trust him with our lives. He came to be our Messiah, our Savior, for no other purpose. Jesus was focused on what he came to do and he did it, hallelujah. We are to live our lives acknowledging him at all times and give ourselves to him at all times. Matthew writes his gospel message from the Old Testament, as I said, of Zechariah 9.9 9, with the reference of Isaiah 62 and 11. He tells about a donkey and a colt, uh, just like Zechariah 9.9. 9. So, and he shows Jesus that, that Jesus fulfilled that prophet's words. Prophets, when prophet's words come true, you know they came from God. Amen. If somebody says a word to us to say something, the prophet, the prophet, God this, God that, well, just keep watching, you know, just keep listening. Because we living in a world that everybody don't know what God said. And they can't hear God. They can't hear God. So, when Jesus entered Jerusalem on a donkey's coat, he affirmed his messianic royalty and his humility. The disciples laid their clothes on both animals so that Jesus could either ride, could ride one or the other. That's what they thought. Jesus was seated on the coat, and probably the, the, the mother of the coat the donkey was following, was leading the way. 
And so as, as the donkey, the mother, led the colt, the colt would follow the mother. The animals would be tied up exactly as Jesus had said, an exact place. And when we hear Jesus say, go to them and bring them back to me, we see his all-knowing God. He's all-knowing God because we remember that he's all God and that he's all man. So he knew, he knew that the colt and the ass would be, the colt and the donkey would be where they are and at the exact place. God is seriously concerned about his word, y'all. It ain't going to change. Because God loves us, he will not let us stay in a state that he's already gave us victory over. Jesus, that was mighty good, Lord. Woo! He ain't going to let us stay in a state that he died to give to us. Hallelujah. God is serious about his word, every detail, even what might seem little. Even what might seem little will come to pass. Hallelujah. And if the seemingly little thing comes to pass, what can we say about the big things? Hallelujah. It shall come to pass. God's word will not change. It will accomplish what he sent it out for. The great multitude was a large crowd that accompanied Jesus from Jericho. And entering Jerusalem was a royal procession, as in 2 Kings 9 and 13. 2 Kings 9 and 13 is about one of Israel's kings of Jehu. They did a processional for Jehu being king, proclaimed king at that time, 2 Kings 9 and 13. And placing a garment under a person is a mark of homage fit for a king, fit for a king. Now actions like these were those that were performed at the anointing of King Solomon, a royal procession. Hallelujah, that Jesus would, would come as, 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 as king of kings, but humble enough to come on an, a coat. Humble enough, glory to God. Is he awesome? Is he wonderful? Yes, he is. First Kings 1 and 3, 34 says, it shows us the public proclamation with David's sanction, talking about Solomon right here, and with the priestly blessing, they were designed to let the people of the city know that Solomon would be the next king of Israel. This was for our outward show for the people in the city to know that their king was coming, that this one dressed as this, paraded as this, would be the king of Israel. Can you see Jesus? Now before this time in Jesus' ministry, he tried always to avoid such public display. Mm -hmm. In Matthew 8 and 4, 9 and 30, 12 and 16, 17 and 9, Jesus, when he would heal people, he would say, now don't tell nobody. He would say, don't tell nobody. Go your way. Don't tell nobody. He would say, it's not my time yet. Is he awesome? It's about timing, hallelujah. But on this particular triumphal entry into Jerusalem, Jesus publicly presented himself to Israel as the nation's Messiah and King. Hallelujah. He was all about timing. We say it all the time. God's timing is like no other. Hallelujah. He had come into this world 42 generations later. He came. 42 generations. Matthew 1 and 17. And it was time, y'all. It was time for this. Jesus knew that the other times that people tried to trick him and tried to get him to do stuff, that, that it wasn't his time. But he knew this time, on this day, this Palm Sunday day, that it was the beginning of his week to be prepared 
to come to the cross. Verse 8 says, And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitude who went before and those who followed cried out, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And I can imagine they said it just that powerful, just that loud, because they knew they had been shown that Jesus was and is the Son of God. Hallelujah. Can't you hear their exuberance? Can't you hear their praise unto Almighty God? Hallelujah. The word Hosanna means save now. And this was done as a joyous praise by the people. They shouted, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now I think it's amazing to see that Hosanna was shouted and it means save now, but some of the same people in the same voice almost would come a few days later to say crucify him. I think that's an amazing thing, but do you know we do the same thing? We've done the same thing. We've lifted him up. Then we go our way and start doing our own thing. Coming out of one mouth. Glory to God. Many people were fooled and deceived not to receive Christ that day. And the same attitude of praise, y'all is in this event was the same superficial words and actions and presumably excitement or the time of praise was seen when King Herod, when he announced that he too wanted to come and worship the king, but King Herod was lying. He didn't want to come serve Jesus. He didn't want to come, he didn't want to come and bless God for the baby. He wanted to kill him while he was a baby and now these people were shouting praise and the praise of Hosanna wanted to kill Jesus they wanted to kill our Messiah our Savior he came to save them but they wanted to kill him yes Jesus came to die for us he died for man, to redeem man from sin. He came as a man, died as a man, to take the sins of man away. The entire city was shaken at this, these actions and these, this celebration. They were taken, they were shaken and said, who is this? Multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee and as God's son y'all as God's only son Jesus is the one who comes in the name of the Lord he is the one who has revealed God to mankind John 14 8 through 11 this triumphal entry is Palm Sunday look at the palms Look at the palms. Look at the decorations that we have strewn in the church even. Strewn in the church, remembering what was done. Glory to his name. The entire city was shaken. This triumphal entry would be the beginning of the week of Christ coming to the cross. And we remember that Easter morning was coming. This week is redeemed, is deemed as a holy week. A holy week. Matthew later writes the conclusion of his gospel in chapters 26 through 28. And he includes scripture that Jesus instructs the church in chapter 28. These final chapters are of the crucifixion and the resurrection. And a few days later we'll be celebrating his resurrection. Hallelujah. The whole city asks the question, who is this? And the question is still being asked today. People say, who is this? Who is Jesus? You would think that out of all the years that Jesus had been talked about by the church, that people would know who Jesus is. But they don't. 
Because many of us don't act like we know who Jesus is. Woo! Glory to God. This crowd answered, this is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. God's people all over the world are proclaiming the name of Jesus and saying it loud and with the power and the authority that God has given us. Hallelujah. We've got to praise him. We've got to praise him. He's beautiful. He's lovely. He's all that we need. Hallelujah. We shout, this is Jesus our Savior and Lord, and we bless his name. In Psalms 136, there's a group of people that would declare or tell or shout something of God's goodness in Psalms 136, and every time they would, one group would shout it, then the other group was saying, his mercy endures forever. Glory to God. They began 136 saying, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. And the crowd would say, and his mercy endures forever. So it became a song. Is that an awesome song? Hallelujah. This side of the church, I want you to say, hang on, hang on, listen, 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 listen. Hang on, y'all got y'all's part too, hang on. This side of the church, y'all shout as loud as you can. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. You say, and his mercy endures forever. And his mercy. Say it again. Oh, give thanks unto God. For he is good. For his mercy endures forever. Come on, y'all. Woo! Hallelujah. His mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. So the whole city was coming out and saying this. Can you imagine the whole city of Seattle? Woo! What a time! What a time it would be. They would say something about Jesus and we would say, His mercy is yours forever. Woo! Hallelujah. We get to proclaim him, y'all. And if we don't praise him, the rocks will cry out. Luke 19 and 40. He, we can say he is Lord. Hallelujah. There are lots of people all over the world declaring that they know who he is and acknowledging him, some even to death. We call his name and give him all the praise. And unlike the people in the city, we boldly declare him king and Lord. He's our creator. He's our savior. He's our master. He is king of kings. He is lord of lords. He's our strong tower. He's our way maker. He's our miracle worker. He's our life. He's our protection. He's our shield and our portion forever. We give him all the praise for who he is and all of his goodness and his blessings taught us, hallelujah. He is our righteousness. He is our healer. He is our strength. He's our protector. He's our joy. He's our peace. Our high priest. He's our God. Our everything. And we get to say it over and over and over and over again because we're grateful. Wow, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. We'll not bow down to political pressure as they did. We can't bow down. We'll not desert him as they did. They cried Hosanna as he entered the city and turned him off. They rejected him. We'll not reject him. We must guard against that action. We must guard against the false words and the false actions, the false prophet. We must guard our heart with all diligence. We as believers, we've been blessed today, this Palm Sunday. Because in the next few days, and joyfully and excitedly, we remember that Easter morning is coming. 
We remember that Jesus went to the cross. He was crucified. He died. He was buried. And in three days, he rose again with all power in his hand. He rose on Easter morning, y'all. We sing the song, he rose. He rose. I'm glad to know he rose. And he did it all just for you and me. That we may have life and wholeness. We get to celebrate Jesus, y'all. For we know who he is, our soon coming king. All the praise, all the honor and glory belongs to him. And we are eternally grateful. We get to praise him because he obeyed God's command to come and save us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever would believe on him should not perish but have eternal life. Now after the resurrection, Jesus appeared to his disciples confirming that he is indeed king over life and death. Thus he established that truth to his people all over the world. And he reigns in our hearts and in our lives forever. And he is coming again to receive us and establish a new perfect world. Hallelujah. That perfect world that we'll be a part of one day. Hallelujah. People all over the world have placed their trust in Jesus. We can and will be a part of that. We can and will be a part of that perfect world. We are the receivers of God's grace and mercy and his everlasting love for us. We all need him. We can have the free gift of being saved. We don't get to go to hell, we get to go to heaven. Hallelujah. We need to, if, if, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus as Savior, we get excited about Jesus. We preach Jesus here. We preach Jesus here. And we get excited about him because he's God. He's our God, hallelujah. He saved us, hallelujah. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. He waits to come in our hearts, y'all. There is no other, when we look around today and we see all the troubles that's going on and the struggle that people go through and to, it's amazing to look at what else can happen but Jesus. <laughs> because I recognized when you begin to see all of the killing, the wickedness that Christ died to deliver us out of, the wickedness that goes on every single day, 24-7. There's no safe place but in Christ. No safe place but in Christ. We can sit in our home and still get killed. We can be in a car and somebody take out our life. When we die, y'all, as Christ, as Christians, we are present with the Lord. We are present with the Lord. And people that are dying without Christ, they didn't get into the place of safety. Jesus is the only place of safety. We're all going to die unless he comes, if he tarries. We're all going to die. But it's mighty good to die in him. Amen. We all need him. He made the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And when we open our hearts to receive him, he'll come in. He waits to come in. He's coming in right now, even now, as Holy Spirit is leading someone to believe in their heart that God is, that Jesus is raised from the dead. He is. His, we are saved by his grace through faith in Jesus. Would you receive him today and tell him thank you? Tell God thank you. He loves us with an everlasting love. And he'll make his home in your heart just as he triumph, that triumphal entry came into Jerusalem. He wants to make a triumphal entry into your heart and into your life. Into your life. Hallelujah. He's given us life eternal. And only Jesus could do that. 
We hear all other kinds of things that can be done to get to God, but it ain't true. It's only Jesus. And when you get to know that, you'll, you'll decide, I agree. You'll decide, I agree. And you'll know him as Lord and as Savior. He loves us. We need to place our life and our love in him because he gave everything to us. Amen. Give him all the praise. Come to Jesus. Do you believe it? Today, if you're here and you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life, would you come? We open the doors of the church are always open to receive you to come to Jesus. Would you come now? Come now. Hallelujah. He, he's with us. And he'll never, ever leave us nor forsake us. Come now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. today and you want prayer, would you come? Would you come now? Please come. We can agree with you in prayer. By faith, believing with you that God is the answer to your problem or to your trouble or to your mind, whatever it is that you need. He is the answer. We need to put our mind straight and focus on Jesus. Hallelujah. Maybe you're here today and you don't have a church home. And you'd like to make new hope for your church home. Would you come? Would you come? He is able. He is. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is.
Let's give a big shout out for Tiger Wood. He won the master today. Worship your name. Worship your name. We worship your holy name. 
worship you. Oh, holy name.